Stefan, uh, we were just starting to talk about the sort of steps that are taken here. How do you decide um, that you're at the point where you can ask for the EUA? And now what happens next? What's your expected timeline? Great. So thank you for having me back. So like other companies, we were waiting for two things. First, to have a final analysis of the phase three efficacy, which we got yesterday. When we filed the protocol for the phase three back in June, July with the FDA, we agreed with them that from a statistical standpoint, we needed to reach 151 cases of disease to be able to have a robust analysis. What we shared this morning is actually an analysis at 196 cases, showing a 94% efficacy. Uh, but as Angeli was saying, the piece that kept me the most excited that I was almost you know, tap dancing in the house yesterday when I heard it from the team is we had 30 cases of severe disease. And of those 30, 30 were on placebo and zero were on our vaccine. So if you think about what has happened in the country, people getting infected, if they get a severe disease, they end up in the hospital. And if you get you know, a bad case, they end up into the ICU and the worst case outcome, of course, is death. If you can stop that whole cascade, that is, I believe, a game changer. And so with that efficacy data, and FDA had been very clear uh, through uh, an EUA guidelines uh, back in October, if you recall, wanting two months of safety data for at least half of a participant. We crossed that threshold in the second half of November, as we had communicated. And so today we have all the pieces we need. We have been working with FDA very closely now for several months to file all the information around manufacturing so that they have everything to be able to make a decision. And so the file is going to go today. The team is finalizing the quality control as we speak. They spend the whole weekend of Thanksgiving checking and checking and rechecking all the data. It's going today. The FDA has indicated to us that we will likely have our uh, advisory board for MRNA 1273 on December 17. And I could anticipate within, I would say, 24 to 72 hours after this, a potential approval. What we're also doing today is to file in many countries outside the US. We're filing in Canada, in Europe, in the UK, in Switzerland, in Israel, in Singapore, and with the WHO to help access in low and middle income countries. Stefan, I wish that you had recorded the tap dancing so we could share that on air. That would have been very interesting. So next time, please do that. Uh, so one of my questions for you really is now that you now that you have you know the filing set to go in, uh, this really sets the company up to validate a product that would be the first on the market in the history of the company. But in addition to your point about manufacturing, and especially since you're looking globally for approval, also includes sort of a, an infrastructure that's being set up that uh, could play a role later on down the line. As it stands right now, uh, do you intend for you know, the relationships that you have with the manufacturers, um, as well as the, the infrastructure being set up for distribution, do you think that's gonna outlast uh, the product itself? Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, as I shared with our investors, you know, third quarter call on my very last slide is I believe 2021 is gonna be the most important inflection point in the company history. If you think about it, we had $4 billion of cash at the end of Q3. We have today 20 products in development. And because this is a platform, I think that's a thing that's very new uh, that a lot of people don't appreciate yet. For 100 plus years that the pharmaceutical industry has been around, there is zero correlation between drug one and drug two in any big pharma pipeline. Since now 50 years that the biotech industry has existed, there's also no correlation. But we use mRNA. mRNA is an information molecule. And so now with this uh, efficacy data, and I hope in a few weeks with this first approval, it has an incredible read across all the vaccine pipeline. We have six products in the pipeline. Some of them are two to five billion dollar annual peak sales per vaccine, like our CMV vaccine, starting its phase three next year. We've announced recently we're going to go after flu. As you know, the efficacy of flu vaccine is pretty bad, you know, in the 30 to 60%. Uh, based on the good data we had in the elderly, which is the population the most at risk with flu, we're going to go after a flu business. Uh, and so, the, as you say, the infrastructure we are building for COVID is going to be used for the entire pipeline. So 2021, I think, is going to be the most important year in the company history. I could see us finish the year with a very strong balance sheet, way north of $4 billion, 
of cash on the balance sheet. We have no debt. I could see us having, you know, maybe 25, 30 products in development on our way to 40 plus product. That's kind of a pipeline like the size of an Amgen. That's what Moderna is gearing up to do. Uh, and this validation by the regulators in a few weeks, I hope, after this successful phase three data has an incredible read across the entire pipeline. What time do you expect that filing today? And then going forward for the December 17th meeting, are there things that you anticipate being asked? Because obviously this nugget about severe uh, COVID prevention is really exciting for you uh, and generally health experts, but does that matter to the to the population broadly? I think it matters tremendously, especially in terms of psychology. You know, you don't always know if you have, you know, an underlying disease. You know, some people have, you know, diabetes, started, they are not aware. So people might have genetic, you know, variation in their genes that might make them more susceptible to the disease. So if you think about the psyche and the impact it has had on the economy, if you could get a vaccine and know that you have 94% chance to have no disease and 6% chance to have mild disease where you will not have anything severe happening to you, I think it will have an enormous impact on psychology. And which is why I think if you think about the economy as a whole, uh, once we get enough American vaccinated, which I could see happening, you know, for people with severe uh, risk uh, in Q1, the rest of the population in Q2, I think by the end of Q2, you might be in a place in the US where basically you have any American who is willing to get vaccinated, have access to a vaccine and goes back to a normal life, go back to traveling, go back to see friends, go back to movie theaters and trips and so on. Uh, I think we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And what time do you expect that filing today? Is it going to be later today or sometime soon this morning? It's going to be, I think, in the afternoon. The team is working on it. We need to make sure that every T is crossed, every I is dot. As you can imagine, this is very important for credibility, also for helping the FDA that they have everything they need uh, squared away. So it will happen today, but by the time we go to bed tonight, it will be at the FDA. Stefan, is all your capacity for, for 2021 in terms of the vaccine, is that sold out? And how close do you think you can get to producing 1 billion doses of the vaccine next year? So it's a good question. So we've already sold out a lot. We have not communicated publicly, so I need to respect Reg FD. But if you look, you know, 100 million doses to the U.S. government, you know, 80 million in Europe, 50 million in Japan, and many, many other deals across the world. And so we're already uh, starting to see a lot of capacity sold out. As we've said, you know, we feel very confident we can make half a billion doses. We are working toward a billion. The piece that is hard for me to know today is, given we are running 24-7 now, is will I have in 2021, every day, all the raw material we need? Because if I need one plastic bag or I miss you know, one raw material, we cannot start production. And so that's the swing factor that is still a bit unknowable today. But you need to be assured we are working as hard as we can with our partners or suppliers to get closer to a billion dollars.